Hi, my name is Frank D'Alessandro. I'm an attorney. I work at Pine Tree Legal Assistance. This presentation is designed to assist homeowners who are having problems making their mortgage payments or who are facing foreclosure. This is a three-part series on foreclosure prevention. The series is an effort by the Pine Tree Legal Assistance and the Maine Housing Counselor Network. And it's designed to help owner, homeowners know what their options are if they're facing foreclosure and what steps they can take to prevent foreclosure. Dealing with foreclosure requires you to be persistent and organized. You need to be, pay attention to every communication you get from the lender. You need to understand the foreclosure timeline and you need to carefully monitor court deadlines. Finally, you need to create a realistic action plan that can help solve the problem. This segment covers your options when you know you have, you're actually in foreclosure. The first step of the foreclosure process is that you'll receive a notice of default or a notice of acceleration from the lender or the servicer. This document will give you 30 days to pay the late amount, the past amount that's due on your mortgage. And if you don't, it will warn you that if you don't pay the amount due, that the lender will consider the entire amount of the mortgage due and will then proceed with a foreclosure action. This notice has to give you at least 30 days to pay off the past amount due. After 30 days contained in the notice of default or acceleration expires, the next step in the foreclosure process is that you'll be served with what's called a summons and complaint. This will be served upon you by a sheriff. You'll have 20 days to respond to that. It is critical that you respond to that summons and complaint within the 20 days. Now, if you go to our website, www.ptla.org, it will have a sample answer you can file. It's very important that you file the answer. If you don't file the answer, a judgment of default can be entered against you. We also advise people who are facing foreclosure to request documents from the lender. And if you go to our website, there will be a sample request for production of documents. And you can serve that upon the lender and they'll have to produce the documents which show that they have the right to enforce the note and the mortgage and that also you're in default of the mortgage. Now, after that happens, after you file the answer and after the lender um, serves you with the response to request for production of documents, um, you'll be served with what's called a motion for summary judgment. Now, you have 21 days to respond to the motion for summary judgment. The motion for summary judgment is a request by the lender to the court asking for judgment against you and basically asking that the court award the property to the lender. And what a motion for summary judgment says is that there's no dispute um, of facts in this case and that therefore the um, lender should be automatically at that point awarded judgment. It's essential that you respond to that motion for summary judgment. If you don't respond to the motion for summary judgment, it is very likely that a judgment for foreclosure will be entered against you. Um, even after you file the motion, you file your response to the motion for summary judgment, then the court will decide based upon the lender's motion and your response about whether or not judgment should be entered against you. Now, if the court decides that judgment should not be entered against you because there's a dispute of the facts, then a trial will be held in your case. And after the trial, the judge will decide whether or not a judgment should, a foreclosure should be entered against you. If um, the judge decides that the lender is right and there is no dispute of facts and a judgment should be entered against you, the judgment would be entered against you after the motion for summary judgment and there would not be a trial in your case. Either way, after final judgment is entered, you have what's called a 90-day period of redemption. During that 90-day period, you have the option to refinance the home or sell the home in order to bring the mortgage current. If you were able to do that, you would be allowed to stay in the house. If you're not able to do that, at the end of the 90-day period, 
a document called a writ of possession can be served upon you. 48 hours after you're served with the writ of possession, you can be removed from the home. So as this timeline indicates, from the time that you're served with the notice of default to the time that you can actually be served with the writ of possession and removed from the home actually takes several months. And during this period of time, not only can you file those documents that we just discussed, but you can also be in negotiation with the lender to try to do a workout to um, get a mortgage that is affordable to you. Now, after foreclosure, also after the 90-day redemption period expires, um, there would be a foreclosure sale. Basically, they would the lender would sell the property. Now, you're entitled to notice of that sale, and you're also entitled to a report of that sale, basically telling you how much the property sold for and whether or not you're entitled to any of the proceeds of that sale. So the key points to remember is, if you're served with a notice of default or a summons and complaint or a motion for summary judgment, it's very important that you get help as soon as possible and you should contact an attorney right away. Now, the more information you have for that attorney, the more, the more helpful the attorney can be for you. So what you should do before you see the attorney is you should get all your documents together. That means all the documents you received at the closing for your mortgage or any papers you received from the servicer or lender after the closing on the mortgage, and also any court papers you may have received. You should do a budget. It's one of the things that we try to do for clients is we try to negotiate with the lender to try to get a mortgage that is affordable. But in order to do that, we have to know what you can afford. So it's really important you do an accurate budget, accurate income, accurate expenses. Be honest with yourself. Now, be persistent and diligent. Now, the first time you contact an attorney or a housing counselor, they may not return your call. As many people know, we're in a, for a housing crisis in Maine. There's a lot of foreclosures. In 2008, over 5,000 foreclosures were filed in the state of Maine, and that number is rising. Attorneys who do this kind of work are very busy, so it's important to be persistent. If you don't get a call back, keep calling until you get help. At the end of this presentation, there will be um, contact information for attorneys you can contact for assistance. Also, there will be information on our website, www.ptla.org, which has a lot of information which will explain the process in greater detail. Now remember, when you get served with the foreclosure, foreclosure papers, it's not the time to give up, it's the time to get help.